If you ever wondered what it's like in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, then this video is for you. This week, we're gonna go over the pros and cons of living in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, truly a gem within Palm Beach. My name is Ray Fernandez. I am with Living in Palm Beach, Florida, powered by eXp Realty. Welcome. If this is the first time to our channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button over in the corner. While you're at it, ring that bell. What that'll do is that'll notify you each time we put out a new video. We put out videos every single week. We talk about all things going on around South Florida, all things of what it's like in Palm Beach, Florida. So if you're wondering what it's like to eat, sleep, and drink Palm Beach, Florida, then this channel is for you. 15 years ago, my family and I relocated to here, this beautiful part of the world we call Palm Beach, Florida, and we haven't looked back. Today, we help people, maybe just like you, relocate to this beautiful part of the world. So if you're thinking about moving here to sunny South Florida, and if you have questions, there's a few ways to reach out to us. Down below is our email address. That's a great way. Also on the screen, you can see our phone number. You can either call or text that number, but perhaps one of the best ways is in the description and in, and in the comments section, there's a link. Click on that link. What that'll do is that'll help us set up at some time to speak, either through a phone call or through a Zoom call. In any case, we have your back when it comes to relocating to here to South Florida. We have helped so many people relocate to this beautiful part of the world we call Palm Beach, and we absolutely love it. So if you've seen our, one of our latest videos, the top five towns in Palm Beach, you'll know why I'm doing this video. We're doing the pros and cons of living in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. And the reason is, is that we probably get asked these days, here we are in the beginning of 2022, we probably get asked more about, uh, about what it's like to live in Palm Beach Gardens than any other place in Palm Beach County. Before I go into some of the pros and cons, let me lay out some of the groundwork as to where you find Palm Beach Gardens. So within Palm Beach County, it's uh, Palm Beach Gardens is the most northern part, the most northern city, big city in, um, in the county, in Palm Beach County. Population is 56,000, so it's, it's, it's large for the area, but it's uh, very, very spread out. It's not dense like you will find in, uh, in, in, West, in West Palm Beach, which is in central Florida. So Palm Beach County is one of the more, more populated areas, one of the more popular areas as well, in northern Palm Beach. So the first pro that I'm gonna give you for uh, Palm Beach Gardens, Florida is, there is just a lot to do there. You have several areas where people frequent with great shopping, outstanding shopping and restaurants and things like that. Just to name some of the more, more central areas in, the, uh, in, in Palm Beach Gardens and gardens as, as a lot of people call it, is you have the Gardens Mall, really, really uh, high-end stores in the Gardens Mall. You have places there such as Nordstrom's and uh, Saks Fifth Avenue. Probably in our area is the, the, the most popular, the highest, the well, best respected mall in, uh, in the South Florida area. So Palm Beach Gardens is part of the Miami metro area. It's about 77 miles north of the uh, downtown area of Miami. If you look at Palm Beach as a whole, the northern part of Palm Beach versus the southern part of Palm Beach is very different. The southern part is much more uh, established, a little bit older in terms of uh, being developed, in terms of development. So what you'll find is in the northern part, northern part of Palm Beach, it's a lot newer. And I think that's one of the attractions, and I guess I can call that a pro. One of the attractions to some people that are relocating to here in Palm to Palm Beach is that the northern part of Palm Beach County and specifically Palm Beach Gardens is a little bit newer than some of the areas you might find in the southern part of the county, such as Delray Beach and Boca Raton. So one of the pros when it comes to living in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida is you are so close to some of the nicest beaches in Palm Beach, in Florida, and quite frankly, the east coast of the United States. If you go directly east from Palm Beach Gardens, you go into Singer Island, which is a lot of condos. I have to make a video about that place one day. And so that's a little bit harder to get to the beach there, but just north of that, you have access to two, two of the best beaches I feel in Palm Beach, which is Juno Beach and Jupiter Beach. Juno Beach has a uh, long pier 
that uh, goes out about 900 feet, a little bit over 900 feet into the ocean. Um, if you've seen my videos previously, living in uh, Juno Beach and so forth, there are awesome things in Juno Beach. It's a, it's a, it's a quite a picturesque place. I love to go there, along with Jupiter as well, but especially there along the pier. Early morning, Juno Beach. The lots of fishermen, lots of people come out early morning fish. I like to walk the pier and uh, look at the look at the sunrise. One of my favorite things to do, but uh, it truly is a gorgeous beach. And then going a little bit north of that is Jupiter Beach. Jupiter Beach is is very unique. I love it. The beach itself is beautiful. It has a pier, but it's a shorter pier. Fishing there is also quite uh, active. And uh, one of the reasons is it's the access to the ocean from the western part of uh, Upper Flor Upper Palm Beach. We have uh, the Jupiter, it's the home of the Jupiter Inlet. Treacherous waters, if you're a boater, you've seen uh, we, there's been uh, some famous, going back years, some, some famous shipwrecks along uh, Jupiter Inlet. There's been, there's warning signs about uh, how treacherous the waters can be and they suggest that you go through there with experienced boaters. But because of the inlet, it, it does, provide, it helps to provide a lot of fishing and so forth. So you will see a lot of fishing early in the morning along Jupiter. The other thing it has is it has the, the lighthouse. The lighthouse is uh, is quite, uh, you know, it's, it's beautiful. You can walk along the, the walkway to the beach. There's Dubois Park. So if you have you have young kids who maybe don't swim or they're too young to swim or not great swimmers, Dubois Park is a little bit safer. It's not, it doesn't have the rough water, but it's adjacent to the water. So one of the pros uh, when it comes to living in Palm Beach Gardens, you have access to all the great things, all the great beaches and some of the best restaurants in Palm Beach, Florida. Now continuing down, PGA Boulevard, which by the way, PGA Boulevard is the main road through Palm Beach Gardens. So if you're traveling from the Gardens Mall and you're going a little bit, going west, right adjacent to it practically, is a place called Downtown at the Gardens. Now Downtown at the Gardens, when we moved here 15 years ago, was absolutely thriving. Tons of restaurants, places for the kids to go. It really was one of the uh, areas where people would go to frequently, even from, even from the southern part of the county, even mid-county, mid people would go there for it. So I'm gonna give you one of the cons is um, hopefully this is gonna turn around, is that way back when, way back then, uh, they had uh, the rents there, whoever bought the property, the, the developer who bought the property, I guess paid too much. And so what he did, he, pay, he had to pass on higher rents to all the people that uh, leased there. And uh, so what happened is a lot of these, a lot of these places couldn't, couldn't keep up, couldn't, uh, did not generate enough revenue to keep up with the, the rent payments and, and all that. So slowly but surely, especially after the, uh, the Great Recession, like say 2008, 2009, downtown at the gardens just sort of just turned in, not, not quite a ghost count, but it started falling apart in terms of keeping its tenants in, um, in the area. And it, it's a shame because there are, there are a couple places that actually did come out of it well, such as the Yard House, which is one of the more popular restaurants, which uh, I like to go to a lot, sports bar sort of, and uh, food's very good. And the Whole Foods, which came in a little bit later actually, is one of the biggest Whole Foods I've ever seen. That's sort of, the, those two are the staples. And they've been, the good news with the gardens is that, that was the con, is the fact that they, all those places moved out and you can literally walk through downtown at the gardens and there was nothing there, it was all these vacancies. Well, a developer, a new developer came in, bought it out at a much lower price, and now is able to basically pass on the lower rents to the, uh, to the um, to the residents to the to the tenants there, and uh, you'll see today in 2022, the beginning of 2022, the place is under enormous construction. My hopes are that that place is going to turn around. I loved that place. It was when we first moved here. It was one of the focal points to go to Palm Beach Gardens, and I believe it will be once again in the very near future. Now, as we continue west down uh, PGA Boulevard, we come upon another area called uh, PGA Commons. Now, if you live in Palm Beach Gardens, you're gonna go to PGA Commons probably quite frequently. There's a lot of shops there, there's a lot of shops there, there's a lot of great restaurants there, there's a museum, there's uh, just all kinds of things there. It runs a long strip along uh, PGA Boulevard. Also across the street from it is a place called Midtown. Both of those places are, just have a lot of stuff there. Midtown has some, some big restaurants, when I mean big, I mean uh, like large size. They've, they've turned over in terms of who their, their tenants are, but 
going in there now is this uh, great uh, churrascaria called Texas to Brazil that is moving over from the, uh, the downtown at the gardens area into there. They're taking over an area that was originally occupied by a steakhouse called Three Forks, which makes sense from one steakhouse to another. But uh, Midtown is, uh, is uh, they've got a lot of, not they have the big restaurants, they have some smaller ones too. They also have some mixed use. If you're looking to, to live in an area where you can be around all that Palm Beach Gardens has to offer, they have some places, some condos and, and, and places for, uh, for people to live there. So while, while there's a lot to do at uh, PGA Commons and Midtown, I want to say one, one con in regards to Palm Beach Gardens and, and in regards to PGA Commons is the traffic is, uh, is intense and the, uh, the parking is not so great. So uh, if you're looking to go to some of these restaurants on a popular night, let's say Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, or literally any time after five o'clock, and you try to find parking, it's going to be very, very hard. They, some of the restaurants, what they've done is they've, uh, they've put aside, they've, they've, they've basically put aside some. They take out, they take over some of the parking lots themselves, parking lot themselves, and they offer valet services. Lots of times it's complimentary, which is, which is good, but you have to tip the guy, of course. But what they do is they, they take away some of those. Uh, they take away some of those those spots so that they can help with the valet. But in any case, whenever the case is, if you're going to go to dinner in those places on the Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, my recommendation is to get there early or expect to wait quite a bit of time. So one of the things uh, that's very common in Palm Beach Gardens and uh, along PGA Commons and, and any restaurant there is people like to eat outside, which I think is great. We have, uh, in the wintertime especially, in the summertime it's not as popular obviously with the heat, but in the wintertime it's extremely popular to eat outside, especially during the season. Uh, our season in Palm Beach ranges from October, November till about the end of uh, April. And, uh, and in this time of year, like right now we're sitting here in January, it can get cold. I mean, cold for us in Florida is very different than what you guys experience up in the north. We consider cold uh, in the, like 50 degrees, believe it or not. And uh, so what'll happen is if people go to dinner in, in PGA Commons or anywhere in Palm Beach Gardens, they have these, uh, these heater stands and they'll put those aside the table. It's one of those things. People just like to eat outside here in the winter in Palm Beach. So now let's continue further west along the um, along PGA Boulevard, and we're gonna go to the area we call PGA National. Now, if you're a golfer, you know exactly what PGA National is. It's a resort, resort, resort style area based around a, a golf course. In fact, they've had, they've had several uh, in the past when they first uh, opened up years and years ago. They've had past, some past, some, some very uh, important uh, golfing events there, such as the Ryder Cup back in, back in the 80s. And they've had other uh, championships in the uh, on the premises. Uh, today, they have a PGA National. They have, host every year the uh, the Honda Classic. So PGA National is a is a place also for uh, just if you want to just go there for uh, uh, a drink at the bar area. They have a lot of great things there, and also you can they, they host events there, which which is really nice. Today, it's under like a lot of the gardens area is under immense construction, but. They've invested, they're going to, uh, their plan is to invest a lot of money to pay PGA, PGA National all the more notoriety that it all deserves. In the PGA National area, there are, there's some homes there as well. There's lots of homes, lots of affordable homes too, but let me give you a landscape, uh, like a, a, the landscape of the, la of the real estate area there. There in, in Palm Beach Gardens, they have what they call, and sometimes, membership communities. A couple of them that come to mind is uh, Mirasol, which is also near PGA National, and, uh, and Bat Bat Ballon Isles, which is also uh, uh, nearby. So these are, uh, for those who are not familiar with membership communities or might not live in Florida, understand what they are. These places require a big, hefty, upfront uh, membership fee to buy in. So if you're gonna buy a property there, I just saw one in, uh, in Mirasol for north of six figures. Uh, you'll have to buy, you'll have to pay that membership fee, which by the way is not financeable, which is also a problem. You have to pay cash for that. Um, you have that, plus you have uh, social fees every year. Lots of times these, they, they require you to belong to either the, the social uh, clubs they have there or, or and or the golf clubs. So uh, be careful. If you're looking in, Palm Beach Gardens area for real estate. It's important to go with a realist, realtor 
that understands the different areas and uh, you need, and most people, my, in my experience, want to avoid these membership communities. Continuing on with some of the communities we have here in uh, Palm Beach Gardens. So we have those, those membership communities I mentioned. There's also some, uh, there's some communities that are, that are very, very expensive. I guess you can call it a con, but there's a place called Old Palm, which is near those uh, communities, near Marisol, PGA National and all that, that the homes there are they're exquisite, they're beautiful. But the price tag on them, they, they run in, I looked at the sales in the last six months and they pretty much go from anywhere from $4 million to $10 million, which is not affordable for a lot of people. So if you're looking for, uh, the, let me set this straight. If you're looking for places in Palm Beach Gardens, there are there definitely are some options. And lots of times today, what people are doing is they're turning to uh, new construction. So one of the cons of uh, living in Palm Beach Gardens is when it comes to new construction, there is just not a lot of it that is east. East, uh, close to like all the areas that I mentioned, like PGA commons and downtown at the garden so a lot of the new construction is a little bit further west because there's no there's no more land east is, is basically the reason so but i will say this the uh new construction communities that are west are extraordinary one thing i will say that's important when it comes to uh, exploring new construction homes here in palm beach county and matter of fact new construction home anywhere is uh, i find it important to get independent unbiased representation that is done with uh, with bringing your realtor. In fact, bringing a realtor on their first visit. Lots of times the builders will not allow you, if you go on your own for the first time, they will not allow you to bring a realtor with you on a subsequent visit, and they won't allow him to represent you and give you advice. So we as realtors help you throughout the process on the new construction um, endeavor. That goes down from looking over the contract with you, helping with uh, some of the inspections, whether it's a drywall inspection, the walkthrough, looking over the closing documents, knowing if what's normal and what's not normal. So once again, if you are exploring new construction, it's important to bring your realtor on your first visit. If you are out of state and you want that same representation, a great way is to call your realtor and just say, hey, listen, I'd like to get registered with so-and-so community. That's a great way to get started. Actually, recently, one of the uh, new construction communities that was East is, uh, was a community called Alton, A-L-T-O-N. Uh, Coulter Builders built, put that together, which Coulter, by the way, I think is, uh, is a high regard builder. I like them. They had a, uh, a community that was east of 95 and that's how they marketed, marketed themselves was new construction east of 95. One thing that bothered me a little bit about that community is that there was no real gate to get in. A lot of people I find like to have gates in, to get into their community. It provides them a little bit of sense of security, but that community sold out actually pretty pretty quickly. Also now, and it's, it's selling now, it's still pretty east. It's a new community also by the Builder Coulter is uh, called Artistry. So if you're looking for new construction homes in Palm Beach Gardens and you want to be sort of east, Artistry is, uh, is something I would certainly consider. Now, in the western part of Palm Beach Gardens is a big master plan community of 3,900 homes when it's all said and done, and this community is called Avenir. If you haven't seen it on my channel a couple couple videos back, at least a couple videos back, I did a video called Living in Avenir. It is by far the most popular request we, my team gets for looking at new constructions in the northern part of Palm Beach. Avenir currently has three builders. This year in 2022, they're expected to get two more. So uh, right now there they have the first one to the to the to the party was uh, Toll Brothers. They also have Kenko high end homes at Kenko. Uh, Kenko starts at about a million and a half now, goes all the way up to about four million. And then recently uh, in the end, second half of uh, 2021, a great builder. I love them. Hovanian came in. So they're um, they've been releasing lots. Uh, about four or five each month now. So those are the three builders in Avenir. Two others are meant to come in, uh, come this later this year. Kill Builders, who just closed up uh, Villamar not too long ago in the Lake Worth High uh, Boynton Beach area. And the other builder that we have there that's coming to town is uh, Devasta Builders, which parent company is Pulte Homes. So I don't wanna to spend too much more time on uh, an Avenir because I do have that whole video on living in Avenir, but, um, you can get in, well, maybe not through Kenko, but you can get in into the area. Because I know people are always wondering if, what the prices are. Currently today, you can get in in around the mid, the mid to upper 700s. So you don't necessarily have to have a million and a half to get in there. But it's one of the, 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 the newest communities. They have their own, they're going to be building their own charter school. 
They're building Panther National. It's going to be a, a sort of a self-sufficient area in the uh, beautiful part of Palm Beach Gardens. So if I had to give a con, uh, most of the new construction, that the good new construction is further west, and I do get a lot of people looking for something a little bit closer to PGA Commons, to downtown at the Gardens and the Gardens Mall. <music>